All right, here we are at Oakmont Alternative Facts. Special day for us, man. We had our first watch party. Great turnout. Uh -huh. And we got a special guest, Marty Fetty. He actually played for the Falcons uh -huh. in the 2016-17 season. And Texans finally had dominated, dominated and finally had a breakthrough game that we all kind of were looking for. The statement. Yeah, the statement game, right? 426 yards, mm. five touchdowns. No picks. No picks. No team, no turnovers. Perfect passer rating. Yeah, perfect The Deshaun rating. that we thought was going to be the Deshaun, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. So so you played for the Falcons, right? What, the Texans finally did the thing, but on a Falcons standpoint, what what is it with them? They're now, what, one and four? One and four. I feel like the team might need a new coach. It doesn't look like they're, they're playing hard enough out there. You know, um, I feel like the payroll is pretty high, and that product that they're giving is just not going to get it done right now. Okay, so you don't think the, the players are responding to Dan Quinn? Yeah, it, it's weird, man. It's kind of hard to put my finger on him. He's a good guy. You know, he he has a good culture there. with a relaxed culture, kind of lets you be a grown man and take care of your business. Yeah. Like, I don't know. It might not be what they need right now. Okay, so you, you think... You said expensive. What are we talking here? You know, you know the numbers. What are we talking here? We know Julio just got a 64, well, $66 million extension. I think it's like fully guaranteed. I think Matthews just got extended left Seven, tackle. $70 yeah. million. What, what else are we talking here, man, as far as numbers? D-line, you got Grady Jarrett, who's on a $70 million contract. Um, Deion Jones, the Mike Backer, he's on a $50 million, I believe. Um, Ricardo just got $20 million for safety. Mm -hmm. Trufant just got 64 about two years ago. Yeah. So it's, it's an expensive roster, man. Yeah, but that's not producing. It's not producing. So when you talk about you know them giving up on the coach or not or need a new coaching culture, you just name all those names. These are star players. At what point do those players pay for themselves than the coach? Like y'all got the talent. I don't feel like I don't think they checked out on Dan Quinn. Uh, he's a hard guy to check out on, man. He's a real good, genuine guy. You know what I'm saying? One of the most one of the best coaches you'll be around. I feel like since you do have those expensive pieces on the team, yeah. what about the other guys? the money's tied up at those positions, right? Okay. So the other guy's going to be rookies, lack of experience, mm. and I think that's where these other teams are pinpointing mm. their weaknesses. Because you got one rush on D-line making 70, so what the rest, the rest going to be, you know, lower tier guys, Rookie backup good. guys. So, yeah. so there's a D-lineman on the Texans that have getting that's been getting a lot of scrutiny lately, mm. J.J. Watt. Mm. Is, that, is that a guy that's been worth his value as of lately? I feel like um, I saw one of y'all tweet. I mean, not tweet on Facebook. Somebody posted he does what he's supposed to do against the inferior O line. Oh. But against the good guys, just doesn't show up. He doesn't show up. Yeah. So if you can, like, he'll win you the games you're supposed to win, right? Yeah. But you want that guy that's gonna get you over the hump. Yeah, absolutely. And now let's go into how the Texas played, man. That team we saw today was not the team we saw last week. What's going on with our consistency, man? Why can't we? It was a statement win, I get that. But why is that not a consistent thing for us? We said that already. We said that already. We played to our competition. Like the Falcons is a big game. Don't let that record fool you. That's a yeah. good team. A good so team. we, regardless of what happens, we're going to come out and we're going to play. But I promise you, in a couple of weeks when we play the Titans, we're going to look like ducks. And it's like, I don't know. I don't understand how, and, and like I said, Martin probably can speak for it better. But like, how does, how does that mean for an athlete that, you show up to the big games, but like a game you you're supposed to win, you, like y'all not showing up. Like, what's going on? Well, you never expect the division games to be blowouts, right? Because they know you better. They yeah. play you every year twice. Yeah, okay. It's gonna be true. a tougher game every time. You know? Yeah. Just like how we saw in the uh, last year in the playoffs with the Colts. That was your third time playing them. It's gonna be hard. It's gonna be a tough game regardless. But for some reason, in my, in my mind, I'm just like, yo. If you have that same consistency, no matter how much you play them, mm -hmm. like we, the, the film is there. The both teams, you're watching the same film, you're doing the same thing. I don't want to look how we look against to today and against the Chargers and the Saints and then come out and be ducks against the Jaguars, the teams that we're just supposed to beat. Like That's my biggest issue with that. Because there's no denying that our offense was in more of a rhythm today than it was last week. And that was without Kenny Stills, too. Exactly. Yeah. So, what, like, True. how how are we able, because basically what I'm trying to do is highlight coaching, right? Our coaching is inconsistent, because how are we in a rhythm today, right? Yeah. We're in a rhythm, we're moving, we're moving, they we're going no They were able to get no that running game going, too. That opens That's up true. a lot of things. That opens up play action pass, which Deshaun is always looking deep. So that helps him then, you know what I'm saying? But, but it seemed like we were in a different look 
this week. Remember, last week we came out with the two running backs. Yep. Looked like we were trying to be a little bit more gimmicky, do something different. Mm -hmm. I believe when you're four games into the season, you don't start experimenting. You know, why, why, why is it all of a sudden he goes back to kind of what Deshaun is comfortable with and we're successful? To me, that's, that's bad coaching. I don't know. I, I just want to know y'all's opinion. Well, I mean, I feel like Deshaun has been a little inconsistent himself. So let's not ignore that. So I feel like some of those balls that would have landed right last week, we might have not been in the same predicament taking that L to the Panthers. But I do understand your point, you know what I'm saying? Because there is an inconsistency with Bill O'Brien and the offensive coaching and the, and the coordinating just in general. And I feel like maybe just sometimes their, their game plan for each team may not be as good as he thinks it is. You know? and, and then let's not let's let's be real about when what I've noticed about the Texans. If your quarterback has any sort of athletic ability, our defense is wrong. Like yeah. we have, we beat Matt Ryan today in the Falcons because Matt Ryan's a statue quarterback. Yeah, he's, he's gonna sit in that pocket yeah, like yeah, there's yeah. no sort of athletic. No, we have rushes enough folks to be able to go get him mm -hmm. or like you know cause him some sort of third ball in the pocket. But every time we play, like no matter if it's a ten percent of mobility, we lose. Because whenever a quarterback gets outside the pocket of us, it's, it's done. Problem, we, yeah, yeah. we can hold coverage for like maybe two seconds. And after that, it's like we're in shambles. Yeah. So that's another thing I noticed. I'm like, next week we play Patrick Mahomes, who's both a passer and a scrambler. So it's like, yeah. like what do we expect for that game? <laughs> well, I feel like a uh, team like the Texans, like you mentioned earlier, like y'all play down to the level of competition. But it's like, what's the Texans' identity? Mm. Like, what do they want to do? Because they, they, don't, they, don't, they yeah. don't go well against the Panthers team because the Panthers want to run the ball and play defense. They're going to keep the score low. They want to yeah. get field goals, beat you like they might yeah. score a touchdown. You know Long what I mean? drives, right. milk the clock. And the Texans ain't built for that. The Texans want to air it out, you know what I'm saying, quick scores. So do we have an identity? No. We don't have an no, identity. No, we don't. Like, like, what do, what do we do well? Like, like, like you said, what do we do well? Games, low scoring, grind it out, those kind of games. We won those kind of games. Now, to touch on the Patrick Mahomes point, <laughs> I think this game is going to be about Deshaun Watson versus Patrick Mahomes. It's going to be a high-scoring affair. Absolutely. But to me, this is one of those games where Deshaun Watson, he hears Patrick Mahomes' name. Yeah. He hears it. Yeah. He probably hears it a little bit too much for his comfort. So what the heck is he going to do about it? Deshaun Watson, I'm looking for you to respond to this game and to show up and to lead our team to victory. That's what I'm looking for. Okay. And that, right. sounds, that, sounds, that sounds good. That's a call out <laughs> for Deshaun. We actually we actually have a, a good guest out here in uh, out here at uh, Oakmont. Um, our guy Eric from Social Complex. He has a question for us, and so we're gonna see what he has to say. Um, what steps do y'all see Deshaun Watson and the Texans taking that next leap up to go to like the Super Bowl? Because right now, we don't have no running game. We never had a running game, in my opinion, besides Arian Foster. As far as Deshaun Watson's league, what do y'all see them taking that next step to get to that big game? We need an anchor on that O-line to begin with, at that left tackle position and in the interior also. If we're getting beaten inside too much, Deshaun's under too much pressure. I feel like on the defensive line, we probably need one more guy, one more pass rusher yeah. to uh, help J.J. Watt. Because he's going to see double teams and stuff all the time. So. I got to agree with that, um, but I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to say we need more consistent play in order for us to take that next step to a championship team. We need more consistent play out of number four. It starts with him. He's the leader of the franchise. He's the leader, he's the leader of the team. If he's not, if he's consistent, a guy that might be having a bad game, he will eventually get into his rhythm because the quarterback and the leader True. is consistent. They feed off of the leader. True. So, you know, it's getting to the point where Deshaun is no longer in a position where he follows the other guys. He now leads. Yeah. So that's where we are. I put it on the floor. I'm the coach type of guy. I think, like, I don't believe that other coaches fear our coach. I feel like the, the, the really, really good coaches that you see probably in the Super Bowl or the AFC Championship game, the Andy Reeds, the, you know, Bill Belichick, I think they look at over in the sideline and see Bill O'Brien just laugh. Right. Like, they, they, they just look at him and like, yeah, this guy's not going to beat me. It's, it's not a joke. Today. <laughs> so I think our coaching needs to be more consistent and we just either we figure something out on that end, yeah. it's not going to work. Well, Deshaun, lead us next Sunday, man, against Kansas City. Because uh, I would love for that to be a competitive game. If the Texans win, man, it's going to be a big game. <laughs> Thank you for uh, checking us out, man. I'll turn it back to Oldman. Appreciate the hospitality. Until next time.